Welcome back to Box of the Lights. In this video, we're going to be learning to play the solitaire variant of Pax Popidiana. This is one of Phil Eklund's specials from Sierra Madre Games, but it's designed by Phil, his son Matt Eklund, and Jim Good. And the box does come with a solo variant. It plays one to six. It says two hours. The solo variant is going to be quite a bit shorter. and the other thing I'm going to show you is that I've tweaked the rules a little bit, so I'm going to show you how this one plays out of the box and how I play it with my variant. The other thing to note is that I've got here the collector's version, so what you're going to see is a big uh, glossy rule book. Here's the Box of Delights solo variant. I've basically taken Phil's uh, rules and just tweaked them a little bit, so it plays very much like the official solo variant, but just a few little mods, a few little mods. Alright, let me get set up and then we'll begin play. To start us off, we need to take this huge deck of cards and we're going to use just 70 of these. And I like to deal my 70 into six piles like this. So six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, and keep dealing like this. 12, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. There's our 70. Now the reason why we do this is because we've got these topple cards. There's four of them, and you're going to keep these separate. Okay, they've got the same backs. And these are kind of checkpoints, or significant points within the game. So we're going to kind of stack these in the deck, and we're going to put one. We'll give them a good shuffle around. We're going to put one in each of four of these decks, and the other two decks we're going to combine, and they're going to go on the top. All right, and we're going to shuffle each of these four stacks. And once we've got these four shuffled, we're going to stack them to create a play deck. All right, so we've got 40 cards or thereabouts, uh, a few more, four topple cards, and then we've got one third of the deck, two six, one third of the deck on top. And that forms our play deck. We'll put this over here. The other types of cards we're going to need are these two public cards. They're just like those cards up there, but they're two partners. There's lots of different types of partners. These are people who can come and assist you. Um, there's one called Teddy Roosevelt and one called the Catholic Church. All right, then we're going to place these to one side. They're public cards because anyone can buy them at any time, but they're rather expensive. And you're going to let's see this. I mean, the cost here is 18 and 16. And what you're going to see is we're probably going to have around two to ten in our hand unless we can save up more coins to buy those specifically. Just to put this kind of in context, Theodore Roosevelt TR was in office from 1901 till 1909 and we're playing what's called a Hacendado, a rich landowner on the borderlands between Mexico and the US. Our aim is to earn enough prestige, and this represents the backing of partners and justification perhaps for your cause, the prestige to seize power from Porfirio Diaz, okay, hence the name Pax Porfiriana, which means the Porfirian peace. It's kind of an ironic term. Diaz ruled Mexico for 33 years until he was overthrown in, in 1910 by a revolution, hence the topple cards, okay. So our aim is to get enough prestige, enough justification to topple Diaz. And we've got four opportunities to do so. We saw those topple cards go in the play deck. Those are our four opportunities to topple Diaz. So we've got six Hacendados to choose from. These are the people we can be, and each one has got their own particular strengths and weaknesses. Um, but kind of representing those four pivotal moments in that period of history, there's three uh, regimes. There's Pax Porfiriana, the, the peace of Porfiriana Diaz. Um, there's the US intervention, US troops of jurisdiction. There's martial law and there's anarchy. Right? We start with the Porfirian peace. Okay, and these are the four different ways 
that we can topple. So if you've got enough loyalty, then we can topple Diaz during the Pax Porfiriana. If we've got enough um, revolution points, revolution prestige, then during anarchy we can topple. In If the regime is martial law, then we need enough command. And then during the US, um, the UX intervention, you need enough outrage. Okay, outrage at the rule of Diaz to overthrow him. All right, so this is the basic aim of the game. So let's choose our Hassan Dado. Well, we could do this randomly. I'm just going to take uh, Boss Shepherd. He's quite simple to play. Choose a colour. I'm going to choose green. Uh, white is going to represent Diaz. So in the solo variant, you're taking on Diaz. There's only one Hassan Dado in the game. When you're playing multiplayer, then each player is racing to overthrow uh, Diaz. Okay, you may not need these, but the white ones, the white cubes are going to represent Diaz. Now these cubes are probably one of the most difficult things to learn. On their own they don't mean anything, but their meaning is um, determined by the context in which they're placed. Okay, so the start of the game, for example, our Hasandado, Boss Shepherd here, gets two cubes, right, given by these icons at the top here. Now these, when they're placed in such a way on your Hasandado card, are income. Okay, so these now become income cubes. What that means is at the end of every turn we're going to get two income. And we can place cards out into our tableau, and these will get cubes on and that will generate more income. Right, and what income is going to allow us to do is buy more cards. Boss starts with an additional three gold. Now in the solo game you start with four gold. Uh, coming with the game with these white counters to be used as gold. But I've already substituted in some poker chips. So each one of these represents one gold token. So everyone starts with four. And then Boss's ability, Shepard's ability, is he starts with an extra three. The other thing I'm going to use is one of these little player reference sheets. These are printed off BGG in the file section. All right, so these don't come with the game. But what they remind me of is a couple of things. My Hasandado can give me one extra command or one extra outrage. Remember, we're looking for these different prestige values. Okay, There's four types of prestige. Loyalty, command, outrage and revolution. Okay, At the start of the game you begin with none of that prestige. So I place these on these trackers here to reflect the fact that I've got zero of each of these prestige. Cards will give me the prestige I'm looking for. Now I know that at the end of the game, when I'm ready to defeat Diaz, Diaz is going to have four of each of these prestige points. Apart from Outrage, he's going to have six. All right. So to defeat him, I'm going to need these trackers to get up to the five point yeah. Now there are ways of knocking down his four, and we'll see that when we get there. But the basic rule is we need five to beat Diaz, or seven to beat on the outrage track. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking to earn cards to give us that number of prestige, enough prestige to topple Diaz. I'm going to put one of these cards aside for Diaz as well. I keep meaning to make a generic Diaz one, but just I'm just using one of the other Hacendados. And recording the fact that he's going to start with zeros as well. And remember, when we come to topple him, he's going to get the support of what's called the tripartite. Diaz is going to bring two prestige points. And his vice president, two prestige points. The third is, um, in my solo variant, I'm calling that third Great Britain. Okay, the Great Britain are bringing two outrage. Okay, so two from Diaz. T's from his vice president, that's four on each, and then an extra two outrage from Great Britain, hence those values that we're heading for. And that's the tripartite. During the game, he's going to track these in just the same way as we do. It's only when we try to topple him he's going to get those bonuses. Now the other thing that the solo variant asks you to bring to the table is a six-sided dice. Now we don't get this with the game, you have to find your own. But my variant, and I'll show you why once we get started, asks for 2d6. 
These other discs that you see over here, these ones, these counters that do come with the game, uh, the red ones represent unrest in your tableau of cards, your settlements that you're going to get. We call them enterprises. And then the blue ones, well, they can be dual purpose, representing 10 gold, or, and the way we're going to use them, because we've got our poker chips representing our gold, the way we're going to use them is to represent when your Hasandado is in jail, because you can be jailed for the bad behaviour. <laughs> OK. To get us cracking, we're going to fill up these markets. There's two markets. There's just a top row and a bottom row. And for the start of the game, we're going to fill them up. I'm just going to fill from left to right, top to bottom. That's it. That's our 12 starting market cards. Okay, these are the things that we can buy and put in our tableau. And remember, we're looking for those prestige points. So there's a few things out here in the market that are going to give us those prestige points we're looking for. So, for example, up here, they're all oval shaped. Okay, this one here, this water project, this one gives us a, a loyalty prestige. This one here is going to give an outrage prestige. Okay, these troops here give you command. The numbers you see in the, in the top right, these are the, the costs to play these cards. And these numbers you see on the market is the cost to buy those cards. Okay, so you buy them, put them in your hand, and then to play them to your tableau you play, pay the cost that you see in the top right. Not everything has a cost. But what you're looking for, like I said, is two things really. You want to get an engine going here, where you're building up an economy that you can earn income from, and get enough prestige points on these things to push up these tracks so you can ultimately topple Diaz and win the game. Setup's done now. We're ready to get going. And it always starts with you as first player. And the rules are actually simple. You do three actions, then discard any headline cards that sit down here. We'll talk about that when we get there. We restore the market, so if we bought stuff, everything shuffles down, and then we redraw to fill the gaps. Okay, so these expensive cards become cheaper. Um, then you take your income, and then that's your turn over. Right? So it's real simple. But it's those three actions, obviously, that are the, you know, the, the guts of the game, if you like. On the reverse of the player aid, it tells you what each of those different actions you can do. Let's think about what we want to try and achieve. As an opening strategy, we're going to concentrate on command and outrage in line with what our Hassan Dado is, is good at. He's going to give us a bonus one on one of those things. Okay. Command is one of the hardest ones. There's fewer command cards in the market, but if I take a look at the market right now, I can see there is one up here, some troops that give command. So I've got my eye on that. So why don't we take that as our action? We've got three actions, remember. Buying a market card costs one action. So we can take this thing. It's in the four spots, so it's going to cost us four gold. Well, that gives us a good head start. Now, this goes to our hand. Okay, This doesn't get put into play. We don't have that command yet. Now, the thing about troops is they get placed, played on an enterprise. They defend or attack an enterprise. They defend an enterprise in your tableau or attack an enterprise in your opponent's tableau. Yes, Diaz in the solo game will be putting enterprises out into his own tableau that we can then attack. All right, so this is in my hand. So we might want to think about grabbing an enterprise as well to put it in. Enterprises are easy to recognize. They're these kind of white and brown cards. Okay, and they each have an income in the top left, these orange cubes that you see. And there's another one down here that's quite expensive at the moment, it's 16. But this one looks quite achievable, attainable. It only costs two at the moment. Right? And I happen to have three gold left. The benefit of this one up here, though, is that it also gives me a loyalty bonus. But it's going to cost me quite a lot to put these into play. This one's going to cost seven to put into play, and this one's going to cost 9 to put into play. So we've got to consider that too. So I've got my troops. They can't do anything yet until I can buy an enterprise, play an enterprise, and then put my troops in that enterprise. Now, of course, the other option is that Diaz may buy one of these enterprises, put it into play, and I can attack it with my troops. Right? So I'm going to go with that plan. Because the other thing is, I've already bought one card from the market, and that costs one action. Remember, you get three actions a turn. But if you want to buy a second card from the market, then that's actually going to cost you two actions. So that's going to take up my whole 
my whole turn. So let's think about what else I can do. Sometimes you want to you want to grab stuff because you don't want Diaz to get it. So I'm going to grab one of these free ones. Yeah, I'm going to grab this one. This one here. This is a partner card. Okay, and this just happens to be one that can be played one of two ways up. Um, and the good thing about these partners is, again, they go to your tableau, but they're not like enterprises. They're not going to give you um, income, but they do give you prestige. Okay, and sometimes they have a special ability as well. And when you look at these cards, you'll find, you know, that the Ecklands and have done a lot of research. I know this is one of Phil's specialities: is understanding his theme. So you know, you can spend quite a lot of time reading the text and understanding, you know, what these real events meant in the context of the the history around the game. Okay, uh, this is a good one because it can be played as a rebel newspaper uh, partner. Remember, these partners are people that are supporting you in your bid to topple Diaz. So you can either play it this way up for revolution, at a cost of five, or you can play it this way up to give you outrage at a cost of seven. Okay? So, you know, I've already said that I'm going to go outrage or command, so I'm going to grab this one, and it's free, but it will cost me two actions. And of course, this is just going to go to my hand for now. Okay? And that's it. I've used up my actions. So then we look in the final market column, which is this one. If there's any headline cards, this is a headline. Remember these newspaper headlines? Then we would play it. There's none there at the moment. We restore the market. So everything shuffles down. Everything gets cheaper. And then we fill from left to right, top to bottom. Now the rules do suggest that you place these in face down so that you can't kind of look at it and then decide where to put it. But I always choose to go left to right, top to bottom, because it then saves you having to do that. We've got a copper mine, an enterprise, and another headline. Okay. These headlines are like uh, immediate effects that come into play. We'll see one very shortly. Next part of our turn then is restore the market, take our income. So all we do here is count our cubes. So at the moment we've just got the two income from our Hacendado. So to income ready for next turn. Just before we take Diaz's turn though, let me tell you about one of the other actions that you can take. One of the actions you can take is called Speculate. It costs one action, and it's often very useful when you've got nothing else to do, you've got an action left over. It's kind of a no-brainer if you've got an action left over and you can't afford to do anything with it. It's called Speculate. And to speculate, all you do is you put one of your cubes on one of the cards in the market. And obviously this is going to shuffle down with your card, with your cube, you know, as the market progresses, until somebody buys that card or it drops off the end. Now the good thing about these speculates is, if someone buys this card, Diaz buys it in the solo game, if Diaz buys this, you take your cube back and you take the income from it. Okay, so if Diaz pays 16, take this one, you're going to take 16 from the bank and put it in your, in your play area, okay? Now obviously as time passes this is going to go down, so the return will be lower if they do take that card. But in the multiplayer game you see, if you put it up here, no one's going to, no one's going to buy that. Because they're going to give you 16 gold, which is going to give you a huge advantage. But you might be more willing to speculate on some of these lower cost cards. It's more likely that someone's going to buy this for 2 or 1 or even one of the free ones. But you're not going to want to put it there because you'll get 0 gold if someone does take it, right? <laughs> Does't make any sense. Uh, this explains one of the changes that I've made to the rules, and this is kind of really the only you know, significant change I've made to the, to the out-of-the-box solo rules. Um, let's assume I did speculate. I'm, I haven't because I didn't have any actions left, so we'll take it back. But assume there's a cube there sitting on the number 8 spot, or even the 16. Because on Diaz's turn, this is where the dice comes into play. Right? So what the rules tell you is, when you're playing for Diaz, he's going to pick a card from the top row of the market and you roll a d6, in this case it's a 6, so he's going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, he's going to take the 6th card. Okay. Now what that means is each of these cards has a 1 in 6 chance of being chosen. So putting my counter up here on the 16 is a bit of a no-brainer because there's a good, you know, there's an equal chance that he'll take the 16 as there will be 
taking the 0 or the 1. That's a pretty good rate of return. Right, it might trickle down and over time, but if I keep putting speculate actions on the 16, at some point it's going to pay off. So this is where I've just changed things up slightly, and, and I'm saying let's use 2d6. And instead of being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, now we've got 2 to 12, right? With 7 being the most uh, frequent occurring one. So what I'm saying is if you roll a 7, I'll make these little tokens to remind me, it takes the first one. Okay, if he rolls a 6 or an 8, it takes the second one, a 5 or a 9, the third, and so on. So now this spot at the end here, rather than being a 1 in 6, is a 1 in 18. So the rate of return is not quite so good. Obviously the most frequent is going to be the one, the ones in the 1 and 2 spot, the 6 and 8, 5 and 9. They're, they're going to come up 50% of the time. And with these things coming up 50% of the time, what that means is the speculative action now behaves a little bit more like what you'd see in a multiplayer game. So for Diaz, let's roll the dice. So the first thing you do is roll 2d6. I've got 11 as it goes, so he's going to take the mine. Then I do the same for the bottom row. This time he's got a 9, he's going to take another mine. So he's taken two mines. So he's grabbed a couple of enterprises. As it goes, he's not going to do anything with them. If he draws an enterprise with no prestige icons on it. The first thing he does is just discard it. So this one's just going to get discarded, this one's just going to get discarded. But while we've got these out here, why don't we tell you what these do. So this one gets discarded, this second mine gets discarded. If I have this in my tableau, this thing's going to give me some income. And the number of income that a mine gives you is the number of income that the current regime says that gold provides or mines provide. So if I look at the current regime, it's Pax Bufuliana, and it says when we're in Pax, mines give you two income. Okay, so I place two of my cubes up here. If for some reason the regime changes to anarchy, now mines only produce one, so I take off one of my income cubes. Okay, so my mines are as effective as the regime we're currently in. Now I might want to try and change the regime to US intervention because then mines generate three income. Okay? So what about some of these other things you see on the card? Most of this is just flavour, right? You've just got pictures and flavour text. Well, let's start over here at the top right. This is the cost to put the, the card into your tableau. So you can have seven gold to place this from my hand in my tableau. But there's other ways that a mine can give you income. And that's what this railroad is all about. Okay. We could get another cube on here. It's called a connection cube. If we paid six gold. Okay, what we're effectively doing is getting income from transport to and from the mine. So at the end of the turn, this mine's now going to give us three income. Okay, two income cubes, one connection cube. There's only a couple more things on this card to know about. This one's called the Jurisdiction. It doesn't have any innate effects of itself, but other cards may refer to it. There's two Mexican jurisdictions. There's Sonora and Chihuahua. Okay, well, I'll show you that one. Actually, there's one up in, there's one up in the market. Here you go. This mine is Chihuahua. There's also the US. Okay. There's another mine, the one that was just the, just got discarded. This one is in the US. Okay, so that's a non-Mexican. There's two Mexican and the US, so three different jurisdictions. Significantly, it determines where troops can go. So remember, I'm trying to put my uh, my troops into play to defend. So if I want the, these troops to come and defend this mine, they also have a jurisdiction. It says Senora. So these troops can only go on. An enterprise in the same jurisdiction. Okay, I couldn't defend a US or a Chihuahuan enterprise with these local troops, Defensas Social. But they could defend this one. They work in the same jurisdiction. Okay. And finally, this uh, this horse down the bottom. To send troops here, notice that these troops don't have a cost of their own per se. 
it depends on the icon that the enterprise they're going to, how the troops are going to get there. And what it says is, if they're going to an enterprise with a horse, then you pay four gold. If they have to walk this boot icon, then they would pay, pay eight gold. If they can get the train, then it would be zero gold. And we can't get the train, we can only get the horse. But, this is another added benefit of upgrading and putting a connection cube here. Now, troops can take the train. In fact, they can't take the horse anymore, they can only take the train. So now it would cost zero gold to put this thing up. Okay, so effectively, if I had this in my in my hand, I might, or in my tableau rather, I might decide to upgrade this first and then place the troops because then I'm getting a cost reduction of four to zero from horse to train. Make sense? So there you go, that's all about um, enterprises. We'll learn some more. There's things like plantations that you can expand. Okay, you can make them bigger and bigger and they get more and more income. The bank, this one is going to pay you according to the uh, economy. So at the moment, we're in Pax Perforiana, the economy is three. So the bank is going to give you three income. Okay, it doesn't have any connection cubes, but you can already get to it by train. All right, it's the Banco de Sonora. Right, that's um, Diaz's turnover. So he's taken two cars, there were two enterprises with no prestige. All he does is discard them. Remember, Diaz is only interested in collecting prestige. Just like a regular player's turn, everything shuffles down. I'll take this off now, it doesn't mean anything. But you see now why the 2d6 works better, or I think it works better than a 1d6, but there you go. Um, and it'll fill from top to left to right bottom. Okay, we've got another mine, and an orange card. These orange ones are attack type cards. Um, I'll explain them when they happen. So are these black ones, and they're likely to happen soon, because they're down here in the cheap seats. Ah, there's one thing I've forgotten. There's a headline sitting in the lowest rank. Remember at the end of the turn before we refill the market, um, discard the headline card in the final market column. Now in solo play you don't discard it, you actually play the thing. So we do need to play this. Um, it's called the Municipal Land card. Okay. Um, and there's two orientations for this. You can have it this way up, and the headline takes an effect, and you have to act out this text in the middle. If you turn it up the other way, it says status quo. Uh, Diaz declares municipal land law unconstitutional, um, but nothing happens. Okay, so he's kind of rejecting that headline, if you like. So. This one's being played out, um, it has to be played out according to the Solo Diaz rules. And the Solo Diaz rules says, unless the text here will change the regime from any other regime to Pax Porfuriana, he'll just play it for status quo. If it's already Pax Porfuriana, he'll play it for status quo. So this one here changes the regime to anarchy, so we know all he's going to do is discard it. And this time it goes to this discard pole down here the bulls and the bears. Alright, this one's a bull and it goes up the top here. If we get two headline cards with bears in them, then we enter a depression. We're okay at the moment, we've got a bullish market as opposed to the bear. Okay? So this all shuffles down. This card should have gone here. So two spots and then we get this mine here. Another mine, goodness, we don't often see this many mines at once. Now remember, I was kind of hoping he'd play an enterprise uh, with a prestige so that I could then go invade it. I was kind of hoping he'd take the bank. Um, so I'm not going to take this, I'm still going to hope he takes the bank. It does give him one loyalty, but at least it means I can send my troops there um, and that will give me one command. Um, it is a Senora just jurisdiction, so I'm going to stick with that plan. Um, I could put my partner in play, but I've only got yeah, I've only got five gold, so I'm still a little bit short. And I quite like this partner up here that gives outrage, um, and I'd quite like to take this Ajudo system lawsuit out of play, and um, that also gives outrage. I'm going to take this guy, this U.S. spy. It costs one. Um, 
put this in my hand. Now I could play that, that's one action, because I've got four gold left. Um, it gives Diaz an additional loyalty during toppling. Now that's only useful if you're playing PvP. If somebody else is trying to topple Diaz using loyalty, you can kind of def come to Diaz's uh, defence, if you like. You can remain loyal to him and stop that, that opponent winning. Um, but more useful, it says, if in play I can discard this to cancel any black or orange card just played. So I can cancel one of these attacking type cards. Uh, but at the moment I'm not going to put it into play. It does cost four gold, so I could, and it will give me one outrage that I'm looking for. But my gold is more valuable to me in my hand right now. Okay, so tactically, we're not worried about getting them down just yet. Uh, the longer this partner's out here, the more prone he is to things like assassination. There's so many good stuff. <laughs> so much good stuff in this game. Anyway, I'm going to keep that in my hands, and instead I'm going to take a card for zero. It's going to cost me two actions. I want to keep that one out there in case Diaz buys it. I'm going to take this one down here. Mormon Lumber doesn't do very much. So I'm going to take this, and then next time I'm going to show you a new type of action. Okay, that's my two actions done. Everything shuffles down. Let's refill the market and let Diaz take his turn. So you can see things do trot along quite quickly in Pax Perfidiana. Let's roll for Diaz, see what he does. Seven, so yeah, he's going to take the card that we hoped he would, and it's um, an Enterprise with a prestige icon. He's going to put that into play. And then from the bottom row, we've also rolled a seven. So let's put this uh, this Enterprise out first. Diaz doesn't have any gold, he doesn't have to pay anything, he doesn't have a hand, so he doesn't go to his hand. No, if it's got a prestige icon, it goes straight into his tableau. It doesn't give him income, he doesn't have income, he doesn't have cubes, he doesn't have gold. All right. These cubes are only going to be used um, in case he sends troops and steals cubes from us. All right. Let's put that to the side for now. Okay, so that Enterprise goes in, that gives him one loyalty, so we tick that up one spot. And now we play the black card, which, unfortunately, this has worked out really badly for us. Okay, and I'll show you why. I wanted that there, so I could send my troops there. I didn't anticipate this card getting picked up. This is the uh, uh, Huido system. It says, Nationalize a Mexican Enterprise. Um, X is the number of unrest on the Enterprise. There aren't any enterprises with unrest. We'll show you that when they when they happen. That's when you attack them with troops. So, if he played this against me, he would be stealing some of my money. Okay. Now I don't have any enterprises in play. If I did, let's assume I have one in play. Right. Let's say we had this water project in play. What he would do? What does nationalize mean? This is a Mexican enterprise because it's in the Senora jurisdiction. Nationalizing an enterprise means discarding it, getting rid of it, okay, it's no longer part of my uh, my empire, my, my land ownership, alright, I used to own this this dam, the Rio Yaki Dam, now Diaz has nationalised and said no, I'm having it, it effectively just gets discarded, okay, no use to anyone anymore. When that happens, when one of these black cards has an effect on an enterprise or whatever else is the target of its attack. Notice it's got this prestige icon, it's upside down, it gives outrage. Basically, what we're saying is, right, he's stolen one of your enterprises and said this is now nationalised. Okay, it's part of, I own it now, Diaz says, not you. Well, that only supports your cause, okay? The people are outraged, they're like, hey, this, this, you built up this power plant, okay? So you get what we call a grudge pile next to your Hacendado. It's cards that are played upside down just for their prestige. So imagine you're playing this player versus player. Yes, you've knocked out somebody's um, enterprise, but in compensation, we now have a little bit more outrage. Okay, so we could push this thing up one spot. But we didn't have an enterprise. But in the solo game, in fact, in the multiplayer game, you can do this too. You can do what's called a straw man action. If 
we don't have any enterprises that this thing can attack. But Diaz does have one of his own. Okay, he can actually play this on himself, and you can do this playing multiplayer too. You can play this on your own enterprises. Diaz will say, right, I'm nationalising, and he's going to do this now because this is a Mexican enterprise. He's going to nationalise the Banco de Sonora and give himself the one outrage. <laughs> Crazy, huh? But he's going to give himself the one outrage. Okay, this goes in Diaz's grudge pile. And this gets discarded. And that means I can't send my troops there. Okay, so he's done a number on me. He's played an enterprise. He's then nationalised it. Stopping me sending my troops there. He may have lost his one loyalty, but he's increased his outrage. That just makes my job a little bit harder. Remember, my target was seven outrage. Now, my target is eight. And this is where you'll love the solo game, because it's so unexpected. The things that can happen, you know, there's stuff that he does that really messes with your plans. Now, it could have been, you see, that I'd seen that um, Ahuido, that black card, and I could have grabbed it myself to stop him playing it against himself, but I missed it. I missed that trick. I went for Mormon Lumber instead, which does nothing. But uh, there you go. I was being greedy. I didn't want to spend the gold. The turn comes back to me now. And I'll show you what my plan was. Um, and it's one of these actions. Okay. So we've shown how to play a card from hand, buy a market card, uh, buy and play a public card. You can sell hand or tableau card. And this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to sell this Mormon lumber. It doesn't do anything for me. I'm going to sell it. The amount of money I get depends on the current regime. And we look at the economy. So this is a nice way of getting money. It's going to give me three gold. That's what the economy is. Okay, now I'm up to seven. So in my second action, I'm going to buy this uh, for two. And that's just one action because it's the first market card I'm buying. I've only got five gold now. Um, so for my third action... I'm going to speculate. I'm going to speculate up here. No, switch that. I'm going to put it here. In fact, no. I'm going to go even one further. And I got to here yeah, for the eight. It's not so likely, but now I've reached the end of my turn. This is going to happen. There's a headline in the furthest to the left, so we've got to play it. Um, the regime's already packed for Friana, so I know this is going to do nothing. So we just play it for its status quo. Fiscal decentralization limits government taxing power. It's a ball, so nothing right there. And now we refill the market, so everything shuffles down. My speculation is now in the 4 slash 10 spot. And these move down. Refill. Okay, I've got a couple of troops come out. Diaz's turn next. Let's roll for the top row. It's a uh, twelve. We didn't get. We didn't get what we wanted. It's going to take the Texas Rangers, and then for the bottom row. Oh, it's a shame we didn't speculate higher. This is the thing, you know, what are the chances? We've got a seven on the low. Okay, so he's going to take this lawsuit. Um, for US troops, they need an enterprise to go and attack. There aren't any, so this just gets discarded. Um, if there was an enterprise, then he would send his troops there. The lawsuit, likewise, it needs an enterprise to attack. It says nationalise a Mexican enterprise. So, again, you can't even straw man it. It just gets discarded. Okay. Um, up, we've got a headline here. This gets discarded, it's a bull. Remember, we're still Pax Bufuriana. Everything shuffles down and refill the market. Okay, ah, now we've got some a couple of better things coming out. We've got a bank and we've got a mill. For now, though, I'm going to ask that you wait until next time to see how this game continues.